Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Recently, I had the privilege of talking with two pretty amazing individuals who were at one time trapped under the grip of addictions. Now, they both wound up homeless at one point. They lost everything, lost relationships with loved ones, even lost their relationships with their own children. Now, they have since completely turned their lives around. They're holding steady jobs. They're sober. They're rebuilding those relationships, and they're daily helping and inspiring others. Overcoming addictions is definitely one of the most difficult challenges that you can face in your life. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into the subject this morning with clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia. Dr. Ragusia, thank you for being back on today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, Dr. Ragusia, do you deal with so many clients who were at one time substance and alcohol abusers. Well, and uh, sure, and I also deal with people who are currently substance and alcohol abusers. Substance abuse and alcohol abuser, sometimes used interchangeably, we can abuse lots of different chemicals and alcohol is just one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. <coughs> Ragusia, the people who come into you and they were at one time dealing with drug and alcohol abuse, and they want to change. They want to have that just be part of their past. They want a new future. What are some of the steps that you say they have to take right at the very beginning? Well, the first thing is to recognize that their uh, substance abuse is a problem. And, and th that is a problem <laughs> because in our culture, we like to think of substance abuse as fun because it is partially fun. Okay? I brought with me a little poem I'm going to read you from Dorothy Parker, who was a writer in the last century who wrote a lot of funny little poems. And um, <clears throat> she wrote this. She said, I like to have a martini, two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. After four, I'm under my host. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I brought that in to read it to you is to make the point that we listen to that poem and we smile or laugh. Mm -hmm. okay? And yet, what it's about is about somebody losing control. Okay? The first martini is fun. The second martini starts to create a problem. And then by the time you get to the fourth martini, you're talking about what? What do we call it now? Uh, rape, sexual assault. Um, uh, I don't know what language we'd use to describe it now. Um, I, I think that she captures the, the nature of the descent from alcohol being fun into it being a problem. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the first thing you have to do with people is get them to recognize that everything connected with alcohol abuse and substance abuse in general is not always fun. And pretty much, if you use it a little bit every once in a while, for most things it's not a big problem. Mm -hmm. But if you do it a lot, it creates big problems. Mm -hmm. You know, you take the Dorothy Parker poem and what does it result in? Unwanted pregnancy for her. So she winds up being a mother. <clears throat> All of a sudden she feels compelled to be married to a guy she doesn't really like. Um, the guy winds up quitting college to be with her, to get a job, to provide money, to raise their kid, and then four years later they get a divorce. I mean that's what winds up resulting in real life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So we got to remember, for starters, that not everything about substance abuse is fun. And that's a real big bridge for a lot of people, because it's, it's a big transition in our culture. We really took Mothers Against Drunk Driving, MADD, <clears throat> um, to change the national dialogue about drinking and driving. Um, believe it or not, when I was a, a youngster, um, and became legal <clears throat> um, uh, in terms of buying alcohol. Um, I and all my friends had portable bars, um, which were little boxes in which you could put two or three bottles of alcohol um, and then some mixers and things like that. And our parents gave them all to us for Christmas on the year we turned 18, which in New York at that time was the age where you could buy alcohol legally. <clears throat> and um, and what we did was we drove around from friend's house to friend's house to friend's house on Christmas day or Christmas night rather drinking and exchanging drinks with all of our parents so that by the time we got done with all of our friends we were totally soused 
And, <clears throat> and the parents would look at us as we were leaving, and they'd say things like, you sure you're OK to drive? And we'd say, oh, sure, we're fine. And believe me, we were well over the legal limit. Um, because we'd probably consume maybe eight or ten ounces of alcohol by that point. Oh, <clears throat> but people laughed and said, be careful, Merry Christmas, and that was it. And, <clears throat> and that's where we were as a culture until Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And that changed the national focus and the national dialogue so that a film like Arthur, for example, <clears throat> which is a comedy about a drunken rich guy, would simply not be funny anymore. Because we don't laugh about it anymore. Yeah. We understand that drinking too much is a problem. Mm -hmm. okay? So when you say to me, what do they have to do? The first thing they have to do is recognize that substance abuse of any kind, drinking in particular, is a problem. And that although it's fun part of the time, when you do it too much, it's a bad thing. But then the limit, Dr. Ragusea, I think it's hard for people, you know, maybe people who have a substance abuse problem, they realize it. So they say, okay, I'm just going to cut back. I'm only going to have one drink. I'm only going to have two drinks. Do you think that that's a good thing, though, someone who has a substance abuse problem, to still take it down to that limit? Well, what the research shows is this, mm -hmm. and that is that people who are social drinkers, uh, like me, for example. I don't drink very much. I may have a drink when I go out to dinner or something like that. I'll have a rum and coke or something of that nature. <clears throat> um, uh, they, can, they can, for example, cut back easily from three to two to one or whatever it is they want. But for somebody who has a real substance abuse problem, cutting down is impossible. Mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> what the research shows is that somebody who's considered an alcoholic must stop drinking. Now, how do we define alcoholism? And there are a lot of different definitions. The best one, I think, is the definition that goes like this. Anybody who drinks a lot of alcohol and it causes significant problems in their family or work life and alcohol is causing it and they know it and they keep drinking anyway, Okay, mm -hmm. <clears throat> those people are alcoholics mm -hmm. because they know it's hurting them and yet they continue to do it. Mm -hmm. So with that population, the only answer is abstinence. They can never have a drink. And if you go to AA meetings, they've got lots of lines about that. Um, uh, and I won't go into all of the way that they talk about it in AA, but, <clears throat> but that's the reality. There was, there was one psychologist who was publishing some research that showed that she had trained them, uh, this group of of the population to be able to drink socially and moderate their consumption of alcohol. <clears throat> and nobody believed it because nobody could replicate it. Nobody had ever seen it before. And ultimately, where it turned out to be true is it, proved, it was proven that she was an alcoholic. And what she was doing was essentially rationalizing her behavior and faking the research. She was deliberately biasing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so that's the answer is, no, you can't just cut back if you've got a problem. You have to simply stop. Stop completely. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. We're going to take a quick break right now, but pick up the discussion when we return from these messages. Stay with us.